somebody's scaling the side of Grayskull. Here's your look at the new Mattel Masters of the Universe Origins web store, Evil Master of Escape. With sinister stealth and a trap-making mind, Webster poses a threat to the bravest and the brightest. Figured before we get a closer look at Webster, I was going to bring in some of the other Master Universe Origins figures so you can see some comparisons of sizes, even though they're technically all oh, yes, going to be using the same bodies. They do change the colors. They swap out the armor from one figure to the other. So you do feel like even though they are using mold after mold after mold, you're at least feeling like you're getting brand new figures every single time, like the original vintage line. Bringing in, though, some of my personal favorites of the figures that we've looked at in previous reviews. Here he is next to the recently looked at Stinkor. Still can't quite place the smell. I'm still going to stick with an artificial plastic smell, but if you can come up with something a little bit more clever than that, Feel free to let me know down below in the comments section. We can also bring in Hordak, one of my personal favorites as well. Bring in Battle Armor Skeletor. And rounding out the batch, the last figure, or more recently, we just also looked at Mosquitoor. Mosquitoor, Webstore, and Stinkor, all surprisingly enough, all have or at the end of their names, are all my personal favorites of the Master Universe Origins figures that we've gotten so far. I love this lineup of characters. And as you can, again, see, even though they are using the same bodies, sure, fine, okay. You're at least getting very different, distinct characters from one release to the other. As for Webster's accessories, it's not technically an accessory, but he comes included with a mini-comic. Now, the mini-comic, providing I can actually pick it up, is the same one that we got included also with Stinkor, entitled A Rock in a Hard Place. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going through and talking about the panels inside the comic, but as you can see, the artwork is really nice on all of it. Complete with the Lord of Power, Lords of Power, Beastman, that we're going to be looking at in an upcoming review. Again, I really love these comics. And again, there's always that advertisement. There's always got to be an advertisement on the back of it telling you what the figures are for that wave. New for 2021. Uh, the Eternian Goddess, we're still going to have a look at in an upcoming review. Beastman, we are also going to be having a look at. And we may also look at the He-Man. I still have yet to pick up that Skeletor. It's just basically the same Skeletor, even though it's got... The double-sided power sword. Is that enough for me to want to buy the Skeletor again? I've already answered that question in my head. Yes. Yes, I'll be buying that Skeletor again. So stay tuned. Like, certainly there are going to be more reviews coming your way and covering off more of the Master Universe Origins figures from this wave. Moving the rock in a hard place out of the way. Instead, let's have a look at the accessory. One lone accessory, if you don't technically count the hook that's on the back of his backpack. The one lone accessory that comes included with Stinkor is his gun. It's a nice looking gun, actually. It looks to be something like you would expect many faces to actually carry around with them, though many faces look more like a radar gun than this large blaster. I actually thought that this blaster was the same one that we got included with the Cronus and uh, Keldor set. But as you can see, though it's very similar, uh, Web Stores is just a little bit smaller, and it's obviously not the same shape, although it's very, very close in design. You can take this. Now, you can only fit it in one of his hands, being the fact that this is the relaxed hand, you already know the answer to which hand it's going to fit into. And it's just going to plug into this hand right here. And I will say it's nice to see that he has the orange blaster like the original vintage toy. It does add for a nice little pop of additional bright color to an otherwise really dark spider-like body. The other accessory and the main one, the cell of this figure is its gimmick, is the fact he does have the zip line on the back of his torso. Now, this can remove if you don't want to have the big and the bulk on the back. I just realize I said a whole bunch of bees there. Um, but unfortunately, it's, it's just going to mean that he's going to have a bare chest underneath that. Uh, of course, you've got the little spider logo there on the front outlined nicely in that bright orange inside more of that reddish color, very similar actually to the red that's on his eyes for them at least. Love that head sculpt. It actually looks like an alien from Star Trek. Uh, is it a Nausicaan? I think it's a Nausicaan, the one that impaled uh, Captain Picard, if memory serves me correct. Although Nausicans tend to have longer hair. Why are we even talking about Star Trek? We certainly should be talking about instead Master Universe Origins. But yeah, it kind of looks like an alien you would expect to see in Star Trek. But spinning this around on the back. So essentially what he's got is he's got this back torso piece. And then he has a zip line. Now the zip line on any toy that you pick up, whether it be from the 80s, from 
90s or even now all have the same problem. You always have this excess line that really doesn't have a place or purpose. The idea is that you're going to be hooking this line because, of course, the line is attached by two ends. The one end is attached with a plastic hook that has three different hook points. And then the other end is basically just, if I can fish to the other end here, you have a triangular piece that you're going to pull when uh, he's attaching to, let's just, as an example, we could certainly bring in Castle Grayskull. You know, now that I, now that I think about it, Castle Grayskull is, an ex is a great example to be showing how the zip line works here on Web Store. Yes, Castle Grayskull is a much better way to show the gimmick on Web Store. And it also gives me a chance to, let's be honest, bring out Castle Grace because it doesn't happen very often on this channel. So now that we've brought the castle out, I'm bringing back in Web Store, who seems so much smaller when you compare it to the vast size of Castle Grayskull. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the line out completely. So basically you have this triangular piece sitting at now the bottom of this backpack, and then you're going to find a place where this can hook onto. That tower seems like a good enough place. What I'm going to do is hook it onto the top here. And then once that's in place, I'm going to then pull this line. And when I pull this line, what it's doing is it's pulling a little pulley system on the inside of the backpack, and it's going to allow him to basically run the line up to the top of the tower, providing you get the angle just right, though. Sometimes if you don't have the angle right or if you're pulling the cord too tightly, sometimes things get a little taut and it doesn't do a, very enough, a good enough job zipping up the line. But as you can see, if I let go of the line, he zips back down. If I pull the line... It allows Webster to go all the way, or almost all the way, up to the top of the tower of Castle Grayskull here. I'm really happy that Mattel decided to keep the gimmick in place that the original vintage Webster had, because I think that's really the charm of this figure, being able to zip line like this. The downside, though, is, of course, as you could probably guess, that he has all this excess of line you have to contend with. Um, there isn't really a place where the hook nor the clip can actually hold on to. You're probably looking at these little ledge points on the sides of his backpack and just assume that the hook can actually hook onto that. And unfortunately, you can't. Um, the thickness of the stem of the hook is way too thick to actually fit onto that little clip point. And none of these actually the hook points can actually sit in there either. The next best thing you can kind of do is just hook the hook onto the side, but it just barely, barely stays in place. Personally, what I like to do when it comes to Web Store, at least from displaying him, is I pull the clip all the way up so that the hook, when it eventually gets its way there, I like to bring the hook all the way up and just sort of keep it right there sitting against his backpack. Uh, there isn't a hole, by the way, on the top of the backpack either where this can tab in or anything like that. And then what I usually do, making use of those clips on one, at least on one side, I don't need them on both sides, I like to wrap the excess line all the way around the backpack and just continue to go until you run out of line. And then when you get to a point where you feel like you kind of have a little bit of additional line to work with, I like to wrap then the line around one of these hooks. And again, you can kind of take a couple of passes around at it if you want. And I just like to keep the clip just off to the side like this. I don't know what other people are doing when it comes to dealing with the excess line, but at least it, it keeps everything neat and out of the way, at least until I decide I want to zip line him again. It's probably going to happen right after this review. Uh, once again, going back to the figure, I know we've talked a little bit about him already. He looks a little bit like a Nausicaan, at least to me. Love again the fact that he looks like the original vintage line, benefiting, of course, now by the fact that the Origins line have the additional articulation, which we will talk about in a second. And going back to the idea that if you don't like the excess backpack on the back of his torso, you could technically detach the side clips and the bottom clips and just remove the whole torso piece. Mind you, underneath, there's not much to really look at. It's just basically his blue body. Speaking of his blue body, I want to move him over just a little bit. And I know we talked earlier about Kronos, thinking that he may have had a similar gun. I'm going to bring in Kronos, who shares, of course, the same color scheme as Trapjaw. This might only be the only time that I bring Kronos into a review for comparison. I really don't like this figure. Uh, nothing wrong against against him. He's just not a very exciting looking figure. Keldor was a lot cooler than Cronus. The reason why I wanted to bring him in, though, to show you the difference in blue. It's not the same blue that they used for Webstore. Webstore's got a much sharper, darker, vibrant looking blue. Really looks nice. Could they have used this blue? Maybe. But I think if you're going to definitely stick with a more classic design, Webstore needs to have a much, much darker blue like this. Of course, when we look at the rest of his body... Lower half is regular stock Skeletor body. 
right down to the fact he does have the monster feet. The monster feet, I don't know if coming across in camera looks like black, but it's actually more of a darker, very dark purple. You can kind of see the difference when you see the the web feet compared next to his loincloth, which is clearly a more darker black. The belt is all done nicely here in red, which mimics again that red on the interior here. And again, you just got a regular stock body for for web store. It's really basically the same regular master's body, except for the fact that his head is going to be different. And of course, he's going to be utilizing a brand new backpack piece. Looking though at the articulation on web store, his head rotates all the way around. Uh, you can move the head up, you can move the head down, and you can also rock it back and forth. And like with all the other Master Universe Origins figures, you can also bring the arms out. You can rotate them all the way around. Single hinge only on the elbow, but that allows at least the forearm to rotate back and forth. And both the relaxed hand and the gripping hand work the same way. You can rotate those all the way around. And you can also rotate the hitchhiking hand all the way around as well and hinge back and forth. Relegated only to just a straight swivel in his torso, but at least he has the hinge joints, ball joints on the insides of his thighs. I don't know why I was want to show you the insides of Figure's legs. You can bring the legs forward. You can bring the legs back. Single hinge on the lower leg where his knee is, of course, it rotates back and forth. Because his boot is also a separate piece, it rotates that all the way around. Hinge up and down on the feet, and you can also rock them back and forth on an ankle pivot. Going though quickly back to his knees, I noticed out of the packaging, Webster's got really loose knees. I think this knee is a little looser than this knee right here. I haven't had too many issues with figures coming out of the packaging, at least from Master Universe Origins, where they've had really loose knees. Webstore seems to be so far the worst of the batch. I can still get him to stand, but it's disheartening to think that taking him out of the packaging already, the figure is suffering from really loose lower legs. Other than the loose leg syndrome, he's actually a nice looking figure, providing I can get him to stand up right there. He is definitely one of my favorites, not only of the vintage line, but also the Master of the Universe Origins line. I was really excited for Stinkor and really excited for Webstore. Funny enough, both of them again ending in OR. And I'm happy to see that at least of this wave, I got two of my favorites released. And that's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, Webster does have the nice, bright, vibrant blues that he had in the original vintage line. Not to mention he does have the zip line. And I'm glad to see that Mattel decided still to keep that in there, as opposed to just giving it a nod to the original gimmick. They actually did put the gimmick in there where you can have him actually zip lining up and down against the sides of objects. I don't know about you guys, but my favorite Webster episode was still the one when him and his family moved into that old kind of haunted house and there was a clock that opened up in the side of the wall and Webster took the stairwell, I think it was a ladder, up to the back of some girl's bedroom and there was a rocking chair and he was talking to the girl that was in the rocking chair, but she didn't reply and he thought it was actually a ghost and Mr. Papadopoulos and ma'am had to explain to him that the house wasn't really haunted and that was just the doll sitting in the rocking chair. <laughs> that was some good times, Webster. Sorry, what? What do you mean? Oh, it was a different Webster. It wasn't this one. This Webster, however, though, does benefit from having the zip line, which I don't think Emmanuel Lewis actually had. Not that I don't remember an episode of Webster with him having a zip line. That would have been cool, him zip lining across the room of a house. But anyways, Webster, as you can see, also featured on the back of the packaging in those two photos. You can hook onto the top tower of Castle Grayskull. Hey, I did that. And it worked pretty good as well. The w one thing I would say, though, while you're pulling the line, if there's resistance where it feels like it's not going to give no matter how hard you pull it, I would just say don't pull it any harder for the risk that not only could you break the line, but you could also damage the pulley system, the little wheels that are inside his backpack. Tread cautiously. Pull the line if the line's able to pull. If there's resistance, don't do it. Don't do it because you're going to break the line. And you're going to get be, you're going to be a sad panda, a sad panda. Uh, Webster here also, of course, featured up the new wave of Master Universe Origins figures, which also consist of Stinkor, another one of my personal favorite characters from Master Universe Origins. Now, of course, there's still also the Beast Man. There's also the Eternian Goddess, both of which we will be looking at in upcoming reviews. I did pick up the He-Man. He-Man hasn't arrived yet. I still don't know whether I'm going to pick up Skeletor or not. I mean, it's, uh, it's just the same figure. It's the head sculpt of the battle armor, so you already have... That battle armor, you're essentially getting the same figure. Although, double-sided sword. Is that enough? Apparently, it was enough to get the He-Man. It's probably going to be enough also to get the Skeletor as well. What do you guys think of Webster? And what is your favorite episode of the Emmanuel Lewis sitcom Webster? Not the same character, for obvious reasons.
What do you guys think of Webster? Let me know down below in the comment section. And hey, now, if you are new to this channel, enjoying the content you're seeing, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, turn on the bell notification, and keep your peepers peeled, because we will be looking at both the Attorney and Goddess and Beastman in some upcoming videos. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.